Hey everyone! In this video, I'll take you through the complete process of downloading, installing, and setting up Android Studio on both Windows 10 and Windows 11. Whether you're just starting out with Android development, or you're an experienced coder looking for a fresh setup, this step-by-step -step guide will make the installation process smooth and hassle-free. We'll cover everything from downloading the latest version of Android Studio, installing the necessary components, configuring your development environment, and even setting up a virtual Android device for testing your apps. I'll also go over common issues you might run into during installation and how to fix them. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a fully functional Android development environment and be ready to start building your own Android applications. So let's dive in and get started. Step 1. Download Android Studio. To get started, you'll need to download Android Studio, the official IDE for Android development. Follow these steps. Open your web browser, Chrome, Edge, or Firefox recommended, and search for Android Studio Download in the search bar. Click on the first link, which should be from developer.android.com, the official website for Android development tools. Once you're on the download page, look for the Download Android Studio button and click on it. Before the download begins, you'll need to accept the license agreement. Check the box to agree to the terms. Click the download button again, and the installer file, .xe, will start downloading. The download size is typically several hundred megabytes, so it may take a few minutes, depending on your internet speed. Once the download is complete, navigate to your downloads folder and locate the installer file. Once the download is complete, navigate to your downloads folder and double-click the .exe file to begin the installation. If a user account control UAC, prompt appears, click Yes to allow changes to your system. The Android Studio setup window will open, click Next to proceed. You'll then see a list of components that will be installed, including Android Studio, the main development environment, and the Android Virtual Device, AVD, which allows you to emulate an Android phone on your computer. Click Next to continue. Next, choose the installation location. The default directory is recommended, but you can select a different one if needed. Click Next again. The installer will then ask about the Start Menu folder for shortcuts. Leave it as default, unless you want a custom location, then click Install. The installation process may take several minutes, depending on your system. Once it's complete, click Next, then Finish to launch Android Studio. Now, you're ready to set up your development environment. When Android Studio starts for the first time, it will prompt you to import settings from a previous installation. If this is your first time using Android Studio, select Do Not Import Settings and click OK. You may be asked whether you want to share usage statistics with Google. Click Don't Send if you prefer not to share data. The welcome screen will appear, showing different options like creating a new project or opening an existing one. Android Studio will then prompt you to download additional components such as SDKs. Click Next and wait for the download process to complete. Once finished, you will see the main Android Studio dashboard. Once Android Studio is installed, you'll need a virtual Android device to test your applications. This is done using the Android Virtual Device, AVD Manager. Follow these steps to create and configure a virtual device. On the Android Studio welcome screen, locate the More Actions drop-down menu and select Virtual Device Manager. A new window will open, displaying any existing virtual devices. If you don't have any, it's time to create one click. Create virtual device to get started. You'll be presented with a list of device categories, such as phone, tablet, Wear OS, TV, and automotive. Since we're setting up a virtual smartphone, select phone, then choose a model like Pixel 8 Pro. This ensures better compatibility with modern apps. Click Next to proceed to the system image selection. Here, you'll need to choose the Android version, API level, that your virtual device will run. If you haven't already downloaded a system image, you'll need to do so now. For most users, API 35, the latest stable version, is recommended. Click download next to API 35, and the SDK component installer will handle the process. The download size can be large, 
so depending on your internet speed, this may take a few minutes. Once the download is complete, click Finish to confirm the installation. Now, select the newly downloaded system image and click Next. You'll be taken to the AVD configuration screen where you can adjust various settings such as screen size, orientation, and RAM allocation. However, for most users, the default settings are ideal, so you can leave everything as it is. Finally, click Finish and your virtual device will be created. You. you can now see it listed in the Virtual Device Manager, ready to be launched. Some computers require virtualization to be manually enabled in order for virtual devices to run smoothly. If you're encountering issues with your virtual devices or emulator, here's how to check and enable virtualization. Start by closing Android Studio if it's open, as changes to system settings require a restart. Next, open the control panel by searching for it in the Start menu. From there, navigate to Programs, and then click on Programs and Features. On the left sidebar, you'll see an option labeled Turn Windows Features. On or off, click on it. In the list of available Windows features, locate Windows Hypervisor Platform and Hyper-V. These are the features responsible for enabling virtualization. Check both boxes to enable them, then click OK to apply the changes. Windows will process these changes, but you'll need to restart your PC to finalize them. When prompted, click Restart Now. After your computer restarts, open Android Studio again and verify that virtualization is working. You can do this by attempting to launch your virtual device. If everything is set up correctly, the virtual device should run smoothly without any issues. Now that everything is set up, let's create and run your first Android project in Android Studio. Here's how to get started. On the Android Studio welcome screen, Click New Project to begin creating your app. In the Project Templates window, select Phone and Tablet and choose the Basic Activity Template. Then, click Next. Next. You'll need to give your project a name. Something like, My First App Works Perfectly. You can leave the package name as default. Choose a save location on your computer where you want your project to be stored. And make sure the programming language is set to Kotlin which is recommended for modern Android development. For the minimum API level, select API 24, which ensures compatibility with most modern Android devices. After that, click Finish to create your project. Android Studio will generate all the necessary project files for you, and this might take a minute or so, depending on your system. Once the project is ready, you'll see it in the main Android Studio window. To run your app using the virtual device, open the Device Manager in Android Studio. In the Device Manager, locate the virtual device you want to use, such as Pixel 8 Pro or the one you created earlier, and click Start. The emulator will begin booting up. Once it's fully loaded, Android Studio will automatically build and deploy your app to the virtual device. That's it! You've successfully installed Android Studio, set up a virtual Android device, created your first project, and ran your app on the emulator. With this setup, you're now ready to start building and testing Android applications right away. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.